Welcome to Amateur Radio. What is Amateur Radio? Well, Amateur Radio is all about communicating. Communicating has always been important for people. Uh, since the dawn of time, people have needed to communicate with each other. What is the then the fastest way to send a message? Well, in the old days, there was the telegraph. Along came the telephone. However, the fastest way is to tell a woman. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, how did people communicate in the past, though? You can imagine in ancient times, about the fastest way people had to communicate was to just shout. You could run, or you were kind of limited by how fast uh, an animal could travel. Some people became ingenious and tried to develop uh, like smoke signals to send messages over long distance, but uh, accuracy was a big problem. Speed being limited by animals, was, or, or even as fast as a ship could sail, was about as fast as a message could be given. Then along came the telegraph, and it really was an amazing invention. It was the first electric way of communicating. And, and you realize, remember how it, it put the uh, Pony Express out of business virtually overnight as people realized how, how quick it would be to send messages. Wires started stringing up around the country. And then the invention of the telephone allowed common people to communicate as long as they could speak the same language. Uh, one advantage of the telegraph was that uh, people that learned the Morse code all spoke the same language, so any any uh, message could be sent around the world. Uh, with the telephone, it was limited to what language people spoke in common. So, how do people communicate today? We use email, the the internet, cell phones, satellites link every place on the planet almost. It's it's amazing, uh, and we communicate in different ways: video production through something as simple as YouTube. Uh, finding information through Google and other sources, Facebook for social networking. All of these are ways people communicate. So how did all this wireless or radio communication start? If you think about it, all these messages, all these mechanisms of communication that we depend on so much today depend on radio signals. Often you don't think about it, but every time you send an email, a radio message is, is sent. Every time a, a cell phone is being used, it's a wireless radio message. So how did all this radio or wireless communication start? But let me just describe that uh, the first demonstration that was done to show radio waves existed. And basically, uh, people realized that, that electricity, when, when you have sparks of electricity, they could hear those sparks on a receiver of sorts. All that was necessary was to spark some electricity and have a receiver to pick up that spark, and they would hear the, the static spark. And that demonstrated that even without a physical connection, no wires connecting from the whatever had the electricity to the to the receiver, the message could still be sent. There must be some kind of invisible wave, radio waves, that carried that message. And it wasn't long before people realized maybe we could use that as a w method of communication. So they started sparking electricity and then getting more and more powerful sparks, trying to to generate more power so that it could the radio waves would travel and carry that information farther. And uh, fairly soon, people started to invent companies to try to, uh, to market that, uh, market the ability to communicate. One of the problems that started to occur was too many operators were transmitting at the same time. What if, if everybody's sparking uh, electricity and trying to send messages? Uh, what would happen? Well, more radio operators meant more interference. People realized, well, in order to be heard, maybe I could crank out more power, so higher power radio stations drown out the weaker stations. Well, there's only so many frequencies that were available, and especially the early radios uh, operated on multiple frequencies. It was hard to, to get a very narrow frequency, so, so it was very difficult to operate with so much interference. Some people thought radio should be reserved for only the military, or maybe for government use, or just commercial use. Fortunately, in the United States, uh, there was a, a lot of people that were experimenters, people that were uh, tinkerers, trying to understand things. And these became the, the foundation of the amateur radio movement. People talked to their congressmen. They, they wanted to make sure that their government, elected government officials reserved some of the radio spectrum for experimenters. But it wasn't long before our country realized, our Congress realized, that somebody would have to regulate the radio spectrum to decide who operated on what frequencies, how much power they should be allowed. So who does regulate the radio spectrum? Well, in the United States, it's the Federal Communications Commission, or the FCC. 
and the rules governing uh, amateur radio are found in Part 97 of, of the Federal Code. What are the purposes of amateur radio? Well, as defined by the Part 97 of the FCC, there's four things. First, to encourage the advancement of the art and science of radio, to make improvements, make discoveries. Second, they realized the importance of amateur radio operators and, and equipment to assist communities with emergency communication capability when it's needed. Uh, even nowadays, with all of our amazing abilities to communicate, there are times when uh, fires or floods, uh, hurricanes, tornadoes knock out communications abilities. Uh, cell towers go down, power out, and uh, it's very important that there be some uh, way for communities to, to communicate so people can get in touch with hospitals, get uh, medicine where it needs to be, get people evacuated where they need to be, get supplies in. Another purpose of amateur radio is to develop a pool of trained radio operators. These have been amazingly important that, that we have a pool of people that are technically trained and trained to communicate well. Fourth, because radio waves have no b international boundaries, people from other countries can communicate with each other. This puts amateur radio operators in a unique position to promote international goodwill by connecting with other citizens from other countries around the world that share common interests in the same ideas and hobby. Those are the four purposes of amateur radio according to the FCC. However, I think the most important purpose of amateur radio is definitely to have fun. And it really is. It's a lot of fun. Always something new to learn. Always something new to try. So what will you learn in this class? What's the purposes of this class? First, I'm trying to teach what ham radio is. What some basic radio equipment you could use uh, and how what licensing requirements there are and, and privileges that come with a license. The second lesson will be uh, kind of the meat, how radio signals are generated. How do you get information from here to there? What building blocks do you have to have to make a radio? Uh, how do you attach the information to the radio wave? That's called modulation. And how do you propagate that through the air or out into space? The third lesson will be the basics of electricity and electronic components and radio circuits. But we're going to go pretty basic on that. It's not going to be anything that, that uh, you can't learn. Fourth lesson will be about power supplies, antennas, and feed lines. Fifth lesson is about safety. The sixth lesson will teach you the rules and regulations and how to communicate well with other operators. And the seventh session will be an exam session. Okay, on to basic radio equipment. You need a transmitter, a receiver, an antenna. Now often you, you'll have a switch that will switch the antenna between the transmitter and the receiver. In most new radios, the transmitter and receiver are combined together into what's called a transceiver. And then, of course, they have to be powered by a power supply. Parts of basic radio equipment, a transmitter and receiver, or transceiver. Sometimes hams call those a rig. So if somebody says, well, what, what's your rig? That's what they're referring to. The antenna, a transmission line, which is sometimes called a feed line, and a power supply. So what actually happens during radio communication? Well, when you transmit, you send out a signal. So the information can be like your voice or uh, data. It could be video or commands like a uh, garage door open command. That's converted to an electronic form, converted into electricity. Then that electricity, that electronic form, is attached or embedded onto a radio wave, which we call a carrier. So this radio wave is then sent out or propagated from the station antenna into the air or through space at the speed of light. Now it's important to remember that all radio waves travel at the speed of light, which is about 300 million meters per second. 300 million meters per second, which is incredibly fast. Now to receive a signal, the radio wave or the carrier with the information on it is intercepted by the antenna. Then that antenna converts that radio wave back into vibrations of electricity and the receiver extracts the information from that that wave of electricity then the information is presented to the user in some kind of format that that they can understand so here I've tried to graphically show you how this works so you see here your transmitter and your receiver each having their own antenna and uh, there's no physical connection no wire between them this is why it's called wireless communication so first, electricity flows from a transmitter to the antenna. As the electricity flows down the antenna, that, that changing electricity causes an electromagnetic radio wave to travel out from the antenna. As that radio wave expands, it, of course, is spreading out over a greater and greater area, so it gets weaker and weaker. 
until finally some of that radio wave intercepts the receiving antenna. Once it hits the receiving antenna, that causes the electrons in the receiving antenna to vibrate. So you get this little wave of electricity in the receiving antenna that goes to the receiver. And then in the receiver, the electricity is converted to sounds or pictures. That's how radio sends information.